So I think that there are a lot of benefits that will come from the SIF mentality. I think first and foremost is that it reprioritizes our focus in that SIF doesn't focus on the outcome, it focuses on the exposure. So the most important thing is what was the potential for that outcome, not the outcome itself. So you may have a serious event that resulted in no injury or no property damage. And in the old days, we would just wash our hands and say, hey, we got lucky, let's move on. But in the SIF mentality, we understand that those precursors can all line up and happen again, and maybe we won't be as lucky next time. So first and foremost, understanding that it's most important to focus on the exposure to that outcome and not the outcome itself. And that really leads us into the second, and one of the things I think will probably be one of the greatest benefits of the whole mentality is um, an enhanced near miss and good catch programs throughout the organizations that we serve. And what I mean by that is now we're focusing on all of the exposure events and near miss and good catch become very, very important. We know statistically uh, with a few of our ACIG members that we've spoken to that have analyzed and tracked their near miss events and, and then measured them for SIF potential over the last eight to 10 years, that over 90% of the SIF exposures that they have were identified by near miss not by loss. And so that opens up 90% more opportunity for us to prevent these serious events from happening, period. Another one of the things that the SIF mentality does is it allows us to apply what we call proportionate response. In other words, when we can identify an exposure and very quickly say this is or is not a SIF exposure, then we can deploy our resources appropriately to investigate that event. If it's a minor event with no SIF potential, we fill out our forms, we take some witness statements, and we move on. However, regardless of the outcome, if it does have SIF potential, then we deploy the appropriate amount of resources to investigate that event. And I think that will be very, very important and ties itself right in with that near-miss mentality of, again, it's not about the outcome, it's about the potential for that outcome. And then finally, um, one of the things that we also see from this mentality is the ability to appropriately apply what we call the hierarchy of controls. So there are various controls that we can put into place in safety to prevent uh, injuries uh, and loss events from happening. And some of those are very administrative and more predicated on uh, human behaviors, let's say. And we all know that humans are going to fail no matter what, no matter we can't incentivize out failure and we can't um, punish out failure. It will happen. And so the idea is that we have to be able to account for that human error and make sure that it doesn't become catastrophic. And so when we identify an exposure as a SIF exposure, we want to make sure that the controls we put in place are at the highest end of the hierarchy, meaning we're eliminating that exposure or we're developing some type of engineering control that takes the human behavior out and protects the workers from it. And so those are the most effective ways to protect workers in the workplace. Now sometimes we can't necessarily uh, do uh, replacement of a type of chemical or engineer out of control and we have to drop to the lower end of the hierarchy of controls. And if we do that, we need to understand that we need to have multiple layers uh, of administrative type controls if that's what we have to do. Because again, if the human fails, it won't be catastrophic if we have multiple layers of protection.